Zacharys. Welcome to Drinks with Didi. We have a very special guest for you today, Neophis Lindley with Definition Cigars, also Pre-VAMU alum. Thank you very much. Please introduce yourself, Neophis. Tell us a little bit about you. <laughs> okay, my name is uh, Neophis Lindley. I am a uh, Dallas Oak Cliff uh, born and raised, uh, proud Prairie View a &M University graduate, um, brother of Alpha, Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and one of the principal owners of Definition Cigars, a uh, Dallas-based boutique uh, cigar brand uh, that started actually in 2019. We'll be approaching two years in uh, January. And so we uh, appreciate the opportunity to be able to uh, speak with you, Didi, and me representing the brand and, you know, how we can, uh, you know, encourage other, you know, uh, small businesses as, as far as working together and see what I can kind of pair with, you know, some of your, uh, your daiquiri mixes as well, too. I like it. I like it. And I appreciate that. So I did a little research and I didn't do a lot because I didn't want to be biased. <laughs> I wanted you to educate me on cigars because I'm very curious. Like, you know, I'll smoke them to look cool. I like the taste of them. Yeah. But there's a certain type of person who smokes a cigar. So kind of tell me about that stereotype and how you got into this. Like to me, you know, you look well established. Like you have a minimum one baby mama and a real job. <laughs> When you smoke cigars. So tell me, like, what is what type of man normally with the cigars? Like, how did you get started into this? I know it's a loaded question, but I want to know. That's a problem. No, it's a question I answer a lot. Uh, honestly, I got into cigars, um, surprisingly, is through a mentor of mine in my job. He's our training manager. He trained, I work in, in sales and he trains every sales rep. He's an older black gentleman, member Cap Alpha Psi. So we kind of had that Greek bond as well, too. And he always, in our training class, he always talked about how he lives in Charlotte, that he goes to his backyard and smokes a cigar. So about seven years ago, I was in Fort Myers, Florida for a sales meeting, and he was there as well, too. And we just got through having dinner, and uh, my manager and some of my coworkers decided to go to a cigar bar. Never been to one before, never tried a cigar before. I was like, you know what? At that point in my life, I was going through a transition. I was like, let me try something new. Let me try something different. And I tried it. I, had, I enjoyed the conversation we had. The drinks that we had, we had a great time. And I didn't smoke another cigar until about a month later. And then from there, I travel a lot with my jobs, mainly around Texas. So I would stop at different cigar shops and just try cigars and really kind of develop my palate um, over the years. And honestly, it became my way to relax. You know, I had a lot of responsibilities on my shoulder at the time. So when my day was done, I would just sit in the uh, backyard of my mother's house because I was taking care of her and smoke cigars. And now it, it, it grew into where I've gained a lot of good relationships with cigar brands, cigar shop owners. And that actually parlayed into starting my own brand with uh, four of my good friends. Um, actually, two of my uh, partners kind of came up with the idea of starting our own boutique cigar brand. We didn't want to be like a year later, like we should have started that. Like, go ahead and get started. But they invited me in because they were like, hey, like you're like, you have the most unique palate that we know as far as cigar smokers. And we've been friends for years, smoked cigars for years. But they were like, yeah, we need you on the team because you have you have a certain taste of cigars that could really make our brand unique and it just kind of went from there and I really you know it really ended up becoming where we got the right people together I have a great partnership with my uh, my partners and for us we decided hey let's go ahead and make this happen for us we named ourselves definition cigars because we wanted um we wanted to be something that we saw you know more black people especially black women get into cigars especially you know under 40 and mm -hmm. the deal was um you define the culture. That's one of our hashtags. You define the culture. Like, what's your definition of cigar smoking? What's your definition of that environment, of that, of that, you know, of that ambiance? Because for me, I thought it was for old, older white guys, older uh, black guys, older retired people, something that they did. But I was 31 at the time, and I'm 38 now, and it's something that I enjoy that I'm very passionate about, you know, because I see that it brings people together, no matter what political lines, race lines, or anything like that, but it also um, really, you know, you know, really just, you know, brings people together in a way that, you know, it, it you, you don't, you, it's not about anything else outside, you're just enjoying that moment, and for me, it's always a, as a way to relax, and so part of defining your culture is what we're kind of talking about today, like, I'm a, I'm a scotch and uh, bourbon drinker, you know, that's something I like to do when it comes to uh, smoking cigars, but I also drink vodka. I drink uh, tequila, I drink daiquiris. I drink all kinds of different things. And I know people that all they drink is vodka and they smoke heavy cigars. Well, our thing is this, like it shouldn't be about 
what you see other people do is how about it's how you define it. It's how you want to do it, you know? Awesome. I like all of that. Cause like, what is the perception of women in cigars? Because, you know, women smoking, they're kind of, kind of has a negative stigma to it. So what is the perception of women who smoke cigars? Is it sexy? Is it unattractive? For me, it, it is grown where it's a very attractive and sexy and acceptable thing because there are a lot of women that are, have their own, like actually one of our biggest customers, well actually two of our biggest customers are uh, black women on cigar lounges. And they support us heavily, but and they also have a great following of female cigar smokers that, you know, smoke cigars. And so for us, they like, you know, they like how approachable we are. We're like all my partners, we're all local. So a lot of local uh, cigar lounges that we, uh, you know, go to, we actually patronize them, you know, because our biggest thing is we want to keep these brick and mortar shops open even now more than ever during the pandemic. And so there are a lot of women that I've introduced to cigars and there are women that have like, you know, they may want like something softer or something, you know, fruity or flavored. And I know women that smoke heavy stuff, strong cigars. And it's just, it's really all about your palate. And so, but we realize that's a big part of what uh, we do, but also other larger cigar brands realize that black women are a great, like are becoming a huge part of the cigar culture. And so if you're able to make connections with them and, and make them feel comfortable within your brand, they're going to support you. I mean, for me, I got it's kind of easier for me because uh, I, I have five sisters and so I'm the only boy in my family. So as far as I kind of make it, the whole idea of the cigar culture to me is I say it's the last bastion of being a gentleman where being a gentleman is accepted and expected. And this is what my friends and I have done for years. It's like if we're with a lady friend or some, even a woman we don't know, she's getting ready to smoke a cigar around us. We cut her cigar for her and we light it for her. You know, we don't, we don't let women just do that if, there, if there's a man around. Just like it's something as simple as, hey, you can't. If, if, if a woman is standing up, somebody better give her their seat. Or if our, our our friends that smoke with us, like, hey, somebody walk into her car. You know, she's getting ready to go. Somebody walk into her car. You know, that thing. So oh. it's really, it's, it's, it's what, like, it's what I tell people. Like, it's, you know a real cigar smoker when they kind of adhere themselves to those kind of standards. So the longer you become a cigar smoker, you learn about this culture and you become a part of it. Is that how that works? It is. It's it's really, and it's really what, because uh, I have a lot of people that want that, I guess for us, um, I just did, we just had an event in Fort Worth yesterday at a cigar bar owned by one of our frat brothers. And it's like, there are people that never tried our cigars before or people that were kind of, they smoked flavored cigars and wanted to go into more standard, you know, uh, cigars. And it's like, we're here to edu educate people because we don't want you to feel uncomfortable somewhere like hey what should i do when it comes to like trying to try new cigars i'm like go to your favorite cigar shop and ask questions that's the, that's the job of, of the tobacconist to answer those kind of questions because that's what i did you know it wasn't it was kind of trial and error what i like what i didn't like but part of it was asking questions and the whole idea of that culture is like it's not about ostracizing anybody it's about pulling people in and making sure they feel comfortable no matter what they do, they go into a shop and it's like, you know, it's like you're new to the, to the spot, but if you know what you're looking for or know what questions to ask, you know, you make the people in the environment comfortable as well too. Cause like, Hey, like it's, you're not about, you know, the flash of it. It's about, you're about the culture itself. It's just that with, you know, black people, we're going to bring our own spice to everything. We're going to bring our own flavor to anything, you know? Right. But for us in particular, you know, as, as, as partners and as, you know, black men and, you know, wanting to grow our business, our biggest thing is we're, it's something we're passionate about. You know, it was one thing my sister told me this year, my big sister, uh, she's like, I, I, I'm not more worried about you being happy. I'm more, more, more worried about you being fulfilled. And she's like, I see you fulfilled with your cigar business. I see you fulfilled being a father right now. So where let those things drive you to be your best. And so for us, it's like we we love just having the conversations with people. Like much like we love having conversations with the owners, with with uh, the consumers as well too. You know, I've been working in sales for twelve years, and it's like when you have that chance to meet your end consumer, and they you know have great things to say about your product, that goes a long way. And so we're to keep driving you to, to do your job well and keep providing the level of service because as good as cigars we have, and that's what we focus on in the beginning, our level of service is different than what especially a lot of black owned cigar lounges are used to. You know, it's more of like, you know, they're, they're used to, you know, seeing like with these bigger companies, you know, not having that one-on-one -on -one touch with, with the ownership. Oh, that's very important. And I know that cigars have, um, anytime you go into a cigar bar, it's a certain kind of vibe. 
-hmm. So when you go into cigar bars, what kind of vibe do you look for? Like, have you ever been to a cigar bar and you're like, you know what, this one's not for me. <laughs> I, I'm not feeling um, it. There, there, there have been times where, you know, it's kind of, actually not really. I'm, I'm one of those people where it's like, because I stand firm in who I am as a person, you know, I've been in places where it seems like I've, I've honestly probably been the only black person in there, you know, buying cigars or smoking cigars. And I kind of just, you know, cut light my cigar and enjoy it, you know. Or I've been places where, you know, it's not necessarily a cigar bar or cigar lounge, but smoking is allowed. Mm -hmm. And, like, I get into my little spot in the corner, like, usually on, a, on an outdoor patio and smoke a cigar and get a couple drinks. And I have people that walk by, they're like, oh, my God, that cigar smells so good. You know, it's like... I'm like, thank you. It's 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 one of mine, you know. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Or like, they'll someone will see one of our T-shirts. Like, hey, I like that logo. Like, I'm like, yeah, this this is my cigar brand. I'm like, here's our website. Here's a card. Website. You're gonna buy some? You know, we'll ship them to you. And so it's really all about. I look to see who's there, and I look to see if everyone else is comfortable as well too. You know, there are places around DFW that really that women are very comfortable in. Uh, there are a lot of shops and a lot of uh, cigar bars that women are very black women are very comfortable in, comfortable in. And, my thing is, if you're in a place where black women are comfortable, that means the vibes are good. <laughs> that's, that's honestly what it is. I've learned, I learned that back in college. So if, if, if women are comfortable, everybody's comfortable. So. Definitely. You're absolutely right. Well, if I was someone who watched this interview and mm -hmm. I was like, you know, Leo is a really cool guy. I want to get into this. What would you recommend as like a starter cigar for people who are not into it, but kind of want to work their way into it? Okay. You're a sales guy. I like the way you're passionate about when you talk yes. about this. So yes. kind of tell me, what, what would be the cigar for beginners, for dummies? You know, one of those. Oh, honestly, well, I, I mean, I will, of course, I'll start with my own brand. But we have our uh, our prolific blend, which is a uh, which is our mildest cigar. Um, and I'm not going to break. I'm not going to break down stats to you or anything like that as far as like the making of the cigar or anything like that. But it's really something that you can smoke any time of day. You can smoke it at night. You can smoke it in the morning with a cup of coffee. But because it's lighter, but it's not it's not bland it has a lot of flavor to it very comfortable smoke and our latest offering is called the noir which uh i guess for us it's uh it has a a wrap the the wrap the, the leaf that wraps it around is, is a cameroon wrapper meaning it comes from it's from tobacco that's grown in africa or the seeds come from africa and so <laughs> we 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 just brought that out a little over a month ago and we can't keep it in the shops quick enough i mean we get in there, people of the color of it, they like the look of it and, you know, they just buy it because it's a cigar anybody can smoke, you know. And so I would say our noir and uh, our prolific, it was like, if you're getting into cigars and you want to kind of support my brand or, you know, a Black-owned brand that really, that a lot of quality went, of work went into make to getting the cigars made, but also picking something that people would like. Yeah, the, the noir and the prolific are, are perfect. And Honestly, I would say those two cigars, I know I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but those go well with, you know, daiquiris and, and margaritas and everything, too. Um, you can find out uh, anything about our cigars um, on our website, which is www.definitioncigars.com. We're also on uh, Instagram at, at Definition Cigars. And I'm on Instagram, of course, uh, at uh, Neo, N-E-O-0421. And I usually post a lot of information about our about any events we have going on. Um, uh, any cigars that we introduce, and just really just my own, just pictures of, of me smoking cigars in my own house, or when I'm out somewhere, or something like that. Just kind of give people the idea of the ambiance and the vibes that we try to project when it comes to uh, our cigars. Because if anything, like I said, we we want you to define your experience. We want you to define the culture because you have a stake in the cigar culture with every cigar that you buy. Tell me what's next for your brand. What do you want to see? What do you want to do? What do you want the people to know once you start growing? What's next for you? Well, we, we actually uh, are really just uh, kind of still navigating through uh, the, the pandemic, but as we're, we've grown a lot during that time, so we're going to really want to expand to uh, more uh, different states around the country, different cigar lounges around the country, and we're always willing to send samples to cigar lounges and let them try our cigars and see what they, what they like and what they, uh, what they want to purchase and keep in their own shops. You know, we've grown a lot over the past six months, and, you know, we, want, we continue to We'll get, be continuing to, to sample different cigars to bring to the market as well, too. Like, it's getting colder, so we're possibly looking at maybe bigger cigars for people to kind of enjoy, you know, as the temperatures start to cool down as well, too. Thank you. And you told me about two amazing cigars you had. What makes your cigars different? I noticed when I was looking on Instagram that they had garter belts, which I think was super <laughs> cool, super sexy. 
So can you tell me about that? I mean, what is that? Is that normal on cigars? What What is that? <clears throat> Actually, well, actually, that's very unique to us. Uh, most cigar uh, cigar brands usually have a, a, paper, a paper band that usually has a, a logo or design on it, something like that. And one of my uh, partners happens to be a tailor. We had like different sample cigars that we were trying to uh, we were trying to how can we ban this? How can we put our signature on it? And what he did was he took some uh, some uh, lace that he had from uh, a, a, a tailor project and he wrapped it around a cigar. And he was like, "That's it." And we were all like, "That's it." And over time, as we do <laughs> cigars, we bring out different colors. And honestly, what people automatically do when they smoke our cigars, they take that as, as the, the band starts to loosen up, they take it off and put it on their finger. I do it. Everybody does it. And they honestly like to collect them because, to see how many they smoke of you know, whatever color that they find. So. I think it's super cool. I love it. And then I even started to pair it like Greek organizations, <laughs> Christmas time, like I think it's a wonderful concept because I will never forget that that is your brand of cigars. So, <laughs> and that's the idea of it. But also, uh, what re re really what makes it stand out as far as for a small boutique brand, we really focus on quality. I mean, our biggest thing out the gate was not the it's not the image, it's not the look or anything. Our biggest thing was let's make let's put out quality cigars, and we focused on that first because in the end, all the flash doesn't mean a thing if you have a bad product. And so, because we're all cigar smokers, like we smoke in each other's homes, we smoke at different cigar lines, we've been friends for years, it's like we know, we all kind of have higher palates and it's like, but we also wanted to be sure that anybody who wanted to come into cigars, they could find something they like. And so as we've grown, we've added a lot of variety to where, hey, I can find something I like, even if, I, if it's the only thing I smoke from Definite Cigars, that's fine. Our thing is, is we want to be sure that we, it's an inclusion thing. And so we want to make sure we don't put it, push anybody away. We even have flavored cigars now. And so we actually are able to pull a whole lot more people in a larger demographic within our brand. So how many flavors do you guys have? Six. Um, blueberry, cognac, mocha, vanilla, chocolate, and peach. Okay. Nice. Yes. And they also feel like they pair well with Didi's daiquiris. So Actually, yeah, they would. So I have a whiskey reader. Tell me what would pair perfectly with a whiskey reader. Which cigar would I have with this? Well, you're going to want to look for something um, that's more uh, medium body, not anything too heavy, because mm -hmm. even with the whiskey, the uh, the daiquiri mix will kind of lighten things up a bit. So it's not going to be something that you have to pair something heavy with. So uh, on top of the prolific uh, that I mentioned earlier in the noir, I would say our pyro cigar is more medium body. Um, it's very... Uh, it's a shorter cigar, it's a Robusto, so it's a, very, it's a shorter cigar, shorter smoke, but it definitely uh, would pair well with that because it has a little bit of spice to it as well, too, so it'll, it'll go well with the, the tanginess of the margarita mix as well as uh, the whiskey as well, too. Awesome. Neo, tell everybody where we can find you. Well, you can find all of our locations that we sell uh, our cigars at uh, www.definitioncigars.com. They'll be able to tell you all the local DFW locations we're at, as well as uh, locations in other parts of the country that we are. But then also, uh, you're also allowed to uh, uh, buy our cigars, as well as uh, some paraphernalia. We have a few t-shirts on there and uh, lighters and cutters as well, too. Thank you so much, Neo, for sitting with us today. Uh, you've educated me. I've learned that these are not garter belts, but they have something special going on. And I appreciate you just telling us how we can get involved in the cigar world and how social it is. So I feel a little excited because now I'm gonna go to a cigar bar and I wanna look cool like you when I grow up, just so you know. <laughs> you can find us at www.deediesdaiquiries.com on Facebook at Deedee's Daiquiries and Instagram at Deedee's Daiquiries. We'll see you next time.